like you when I cried my last year. Amen. Amen. Yesterday. What a blessing again it is to be in the house of the Lord. Grab your Bibles. I want to speak a word of encouragement to your heart today and also a challenging word. Amen. A word that amen. you can find yourself in, but also a word that will challenge us to be somewhat better for the Lord. Amen. 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 If you'll stand with us today, we're going to two passages of Scripture, both in the Old Testament. Amen. Amen. Going to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number five. Amen. Deuteronomy, chapter number five, verse 33. Deuteronomy is out the fifth book of the Bible. Amen. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse number 33. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse number 33. And 1 Samuel chapter 15. chapter 5 verse 33 and 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 22 when you have it you can say amen amen, amen. Deuteronomy 5 and 33 hear the word of the Lord it says ye shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God have commanded you that ye may live, and that it may be well with you, and that ye may prolong your days in the land which ye shall possess. Ye shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God hath commanded you, yeah. that ye may live, and that it may be well with you, yeah. and that ye may prolong your days in the land which ye shall possess. Amen. 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 First Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey <laughs> is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. Samuel asked the question, that the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. And we all said, Amen. 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 You may be seated in this presence. I want to preach from a subject day entitled Walking in Obedience. Amen. Walking in Obedience. Somebody say that. Walking, Walking in, obedience. in Obedience. Yeah, I want to talk about that today. Walking in Obedience. Friends, our focus as a church is rather strict this year. Um, it will be like a parent, amen, that won't allow the kids to go next door, won't allow other kids to come and stay over, amen. I will be rather strict this year about our focus um, because we are asking God to reveal to us who we are in him. Amen. It really doesn't matter who the person on your role thinks you are. Amen. Amen. You need to know what God thinks about you. Amen. Somebody amen. say amen. 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 So this year and everything that we do, amen, we, I'm asking God to reveal 
your individual purpose. I'm asking God to reveal what he is calling you to do. Amen. I'm asking God to reveal his plan, not just for the Rivers of Life Church as a whole, but I want God to reveal to you his plan for your life. Amen. 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 Look at somebody and say, this is about me this year. This, this is about me. Yeah, this is about me this year. This is about what I want God to say to me. Because the truth of the matter is, you need to know why you are still here. Amen. You need to know why, amen, God, amen, allowed you to keep standing after all you've been through, after the many trials and the many tribulations, amen, and after all the hardships and the traumas you have faced in life, you need God to reveal to you why you made it out. Amen. Amen. Because the truth of the matter is somebody went through what you went through and did not make it through it. Amen. Amen. So there has to be a reason, do I have a witness, Amen. as to why God allowed you to weather that particular storm. Yes. Amen. There has to be a reason why God allowed you, of all people, to overcome that obstacle. Amen. Amen. God must think something about you and something about the anointing that is on your life, something about the call of God that he has placed on you, God must think something about that, amen, to allow you to weather and to make it through the toughness of that situation, amen. amen. And so this year, amen, when you look back on your life and all that you've been through, amen, you must begin to ask yourself, amen, what is it that God wants to do through me? Amen. I just need a couple of you to repeat this after me. Show me, Lord. Show me, Lord. Yeah, show me, Lord. Show me, Lord. Show me, Lord. Sanction the anointing that you have placed on my life. Use me according to your will. Hallelujah. Use me for your purpose. Hallelujah. Don't allow me to use another year or to take another year and to sit and watch everybody else pour their blood, sweat, and tears into this ministry and into this call. Amen. And I sit idly by, twiddling my thumbs. Lord, show me, Lord. Amen. Amen. Put me to work, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to work in the different ministries of my church. I, I want to work, amen, in, in, in my home. I want to work on my job. I want to work with young people. I want to work with elderly people. I want to be you up. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We always quote Amen. Paul's verse to Timothy I am ready now to be offered up. Amen. The time of my departure is at hand but what a lot of people do not know Amen is that in that part of the world Amen. In Africa when they said I, I, want, I am ready now to be offered up what that means is I am depleted that I have given everything, that there is nothing left for me to give, there is nothing left for me to sow, amen, everything in me, I poured it all out, that's why Paul follows it and says, I fought a good fight and I finished my course, because what he was saying is, there's nothing left for me to give you, Timothy, there's nothing left for me to share, everything that God gave me, I gave it to you, everything that God poured into me. I poured it out to you. Amen. And so friends, we must begin to ask God, use me in the Rivers of Life Church, whether it's in outreach ministry, whether it's in bereavement ministry, whether it's in media ministry, whether it's in the music ministry, or whether, whether it's on a planning, a program, or whether I'm establishing a new ministry, whether I'm, I'm, I'm helping to strengthen an existing ministry, or I'm trying to further the kingdom of God. Lord, just put me to work. Amen. Come on, somebody say amen. 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 Just put me to work. Put me to work. Put me to work. Amen. The, the harvest is plenteous. It is the laborers that are few. Amen. There is plenty of work to be done in the kingdom of our God. We just need to work. Amen. And what you have to understand, amen.
understand is that you're not working for John. You're not working for the establishment of rivers of life. You are working for the Lord. The Bible says whatsoever you do, do it as unto the Lord. And that's where people mess up. When you start working for people and people let you down, then you no longer want to work. When you start working for a church and that church no longer suits your needs, then you leave the church and your work stops. But when you are working for the Lord, that is something that is timeless. That is something that is ageless. That is something that through the hell and the rain of your life, you will continue to do because you understand I'm not working for people. I'm working for God. Amen. And as long as God be pleased with what I'm doing in my life, amen, that makes all the rest, amen, null and void to me. Look at your name and say, I'm working for the Lord. I'm working for the Lord. People may not like it, but I'm working for the Lord. Amen. People may not see, amen, or it may not make sense to people all the time, but I'm working for the Lord. Amen. I'm giving my gifts and my service to the Lord. Amen. amen. Solomon teaches us in the book of Ecclesiastes that whatsoever our hand find him to do, we need to do it. Amen. 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 He says, for there is no device, knowledge, wisdom, amen, no work after the grave. Amen. Once you are stretched out, amen, they have placed embalming fluid in your bite, in your veins, glory to God. There is no nothing. Somebody say nothing. nothing. There is nothing else that you can do. There is nothing else that you can pour out. You have given everything in that moment. Amen. Amen. And so my friends, before you leave this world, you need to give all you have to the Lord. Amen. He teaches us. He teaches us, Deacon Edwards. Amen. To present our body as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. Amen. I want to bust the devil in the head today. Amen. River of life, don't wait till someone asks you to do something for you to get to work. Amen. Don't wait until somebody ask you to be on a committee or somebody ask you to plan a program or somebody ask you to do this or that. Amen. And then you want to get to work. If you see a need in the kingdom, get to work. Amen. Rewind and say it again, Pastor. If you see a need in the kingdom, get to work. One more time, Pastor. They didn't hear you. If you see a need in the kingdom, get to work. If you see where rivers of life is lacking, get to work. Don't talk about it. Be about it. Don't be a part of the problem. Be a part of the solution. Amen. Let's get eager to work for the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. We shouldn't have to beg and prime and pump people. Amen. To do this or that in the church. Get to work for the Lord. Join a ministry. Join an auxiliary. Ask questions. Hallelujah. Amen. How can I be of service? Amen. Is there anything I can do to help? What time do you need me to be there? How can my family support the ministry? Talk to the pastor. Amen. Tell me what's on your heart. Amen. Let's get to work. Somebody say let's get to work. Let's get to work. Amen. We sit up here every Sunday and we say, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. But did you forget what verse 2 says? Verse 2 says, serve the Lord with gladness. Somebody shout, serve the Lord. Come on, somebody say it again. Serve the Lord. It's time to serve the Lord. It's time to serve his people. It's time to serve one another. It's time to serve this world. God save you so you can come to church and be cute. God didn't save you so you can come to church and stick the chest out and say he delivered me from this and he delivered me from that. No, God saved you because there's a work he has for you to do. God saved you, amen, because he has a nation of people that only you can reach. He has a remnant of people that are going to need your testimony. He has a remnant of people that are going to need your witness that God is able and God can bring you through anything. Amen. You got a work for you to do. There is a work that God wants you to do. Amen. And so my friends, if God has saved you to work, you need to get to work. Somebody say get to work. Put your hand to the plow. Put one foot in front of the other. Work for the Lord. Serve the Lord. Give God your time. Give God your gift. Give God your talent. And when you work for the Lord and this life comes to an end, one day, God will look at your work and he'll say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. 
for the Lord. I want to work for the Lord. I want to work for the Lord. I want to give him my gift. I want to give him my talent. Hallelujah. I want him to use me up, Sister Charlotte, so they can't use me no more. Amen. And I feel a sense of urgency about working for the Lord. Remember the life we've been through a lot. We weather some storms. We keep getting hit with blow after blow, emotional blows and family blows and church blows. But I just believe that God's going to use what we're going through. God's going to use everything we had to face. He's going to use it to his glory. He's going to use it, amen, that we can be a witness to somebody. If God brought me through, he can bring you through. If God delivered me, then God can deliver you. Somebody shout, get the word! Get the word! Right. Amen. We got to get to work. Amen. But catch this, catch this, Sister Charlotte. Working requires a level of obedience. Amen. Oh, y'all thought I was lost. I'm not lost. I'm going somewhere. Amen. Working requires a level of obedience. When you are working for the Lord, y'all need to hear me. When you're working for the Lord, you must walk in obedience. As a Christian, you must know that you are not in charge. Do I have a witness? Amen. You are not running the show. Amen. God is in control. God, amen, is running the show. Amen. God tells us what to do, mother dear. God tells us when to do it, brother Greg. God tells us how to do it. Amen. God is in charge. Amen. Brace yourselves. God saved us. God cleaned us. God is guiding us. And it is our responsibility to walk in full obedience. Listen to this. If God says go, we must go. If God says stand still, we must stand still. If God says wait, oh, help me y'all, we must wait. If God says pray, hallelujah, we must pray. If God says fast, turn your plate down. We must turn our plate down. Hallelujah. If God says get rid of that format, that format is not meeting the people where they are. It is preventing my presence from Hallelujah. If God says that's not the song to sing this Sunday, we can't sing that song this Sunday. Why not? Because God, hallelujah, is in charge. If God, amen, says destroy that tradition or change up that prayer service, we got to move with God. We got to go with God. We got to follow after the statutes of the Lord. Why? Because it's the outpour of God, the glory of God, the of God is attached to obedience. When you do what God tells you to do, when you move how God tells you to move, then the presence of God can come in the room. Then the presence of God can fill every heart. Then the Spirit of God can sit on people and fill people up. But you gotta be obedient. Amen. 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 You gotta be obedient. You gotta, you gotta be obedient. obedient. You gotta be obedient. You gotta be obedient. You can't do it half stepping. You got to do what God told you to do. Amen. I want to tell you that in the coming days, God is gonna begin talking to some of y'all. God's gonna begin telling y'all some things, and you cannot afford to get in your head. Come on, now. Hallelujah. Hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. You cannot afford to get in your head. You cannot afford, amen, to talk yourself out of what God has told you. Amen. amen. You cannot convince yourself, amen, to do it another way. You have to walk in obedience. Do what God says do. Go when God says go. Serve how God says serve. Give when God says give. Even when you don't feel like it. Even when your body is Tired. Even when it seems like you're on the battlefield by yourself. Even when it seems, glory to God, that the more you try to progress, the more you get knocked. 
back. You got to keep on walking in obedience. Even when your family don't understand. Even when your family seems to not get it. Even when you keep telling people about the goodness of the Lord and how God has made so many ways for you. Amen. And it seems like they just are not getting that hit. You got to keep on walking. You got to stay the course. You got to stay with God. You got to keep on walking. Why? Because obedience is better <laughs> than sacrifice. Amen. Am I preaching in the house today? Amen. I need you to understand. I need you to understand, my friends. I need you to understand, amen, that it'll pay off if you're obedient. <laughs> amen. Just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. it's going to pay off when you're obedient. Come on, look at somebody else and just say, neighbor, neighbor. it's going to pay off if you're obedient. When you hear the word of God and act on it, it'll pay off. Sister Sean, I'm a witness that if you adhere to the call of God, after a while it'll pay off. Amen. When you negate your personal will and you submit to the will of Almighty God, it will pay off. Hallelujah. Amen. When you forget what you think and forget your own personal agenda, amen, and you wait on God and you follow what God told you, somebody say it'll pay off. Amen. It'll pay off. It'll pay off. Hallelujah. I feel like sound right there. Amen. Because I cannot tell you how many times, amen, I followed what God told me. It didn't make sense. It didn't add up. The dots were not connecting. But after a while, God showed me. Amen. This is why I told you to do it. This is why I told you to go. This is why I told you to abstain. Amen. It'll pay off. Hallelujah. If you'll just be obedient unto God. Because obedience is better, is better than sacrifice. Amen. Amen. You see, my friend, that's the conflict of one of our texts today. King Saul, amen, was not obedient. But I need you to get this, get this, Brother Jerry. He was not obedient, but it was not an occasion of sin. Amen. When I put this text out, amen, I, I told the Lord, I said, Lord, amen, if I put this on the flyer that I'm preaching about, amen, uh, uh, walking in obedience, people are not going to come to church because people don't want to hear you talk about sin. Amen. But 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 today, y'all, I ain't thinking about sin. Amen. You knew what you did was wrong when you did it. Amen. Amen. I'm trying to get you to walk in your purpose and in your calling. I ain't got time to talk about your sin today. You got to catch me on another time. King Saul in our text today was disobedient, but it was not an occasion of sin. God told King Saul to do something. Amen. He told him to follow a mission or to follow a guideline. Amen. And he did not do what God asked him to do. Amen. What are you talking about, Pastor? Well, amen. Through the prophet of Samuel, God tells Saul to kill everything of Amalek. Get rid of the women, get rid of the children, get rid of the men. Amen. Kill the lion, kill the goat, kill the bull. Everything. Get rid of it. Destroy them. Amen. They are not walking according to the will of the Lord. And so he tells them, I need you to kill them and get rid of everything. Glory to God. Saul goes in. He he kills Amalek, he kills the bull, amen, he kills the women and the children, but there's something, hallelujah, that Saul said, Ooh, that looks good to the eye, let's take that back home, and so when the prophet comes to Saul, he asks him, did you do what God asked you to do, did you kill everything of Amalek, did you kill all the men, the women, the boys, and the girls, amen, Saul stuck his chest out and said, Surely we killed it all. Glory to God. And Samuel looked at him and said, If you did what God told you to do, what is that cry that I hear? The oxen are bleeding. The goats are crying. You don't have no goats and oxen in your house. If you did what God told you to do, then there would not be a cry back there in the yard. Glory to God. And the Bible said that God got angry with Saul. Amen. And he took his anointing from him. Amen. I want to tell somebody today that when God has called you to do something. I don't care what looks good to the eye. If God tells you to do something, you follow after what God said. You don't want God to turn his back on you. You don't want God to take your anointing. You don't want God to take your gift. You better submit yourself because obedience is better, is better than, sacrifice. than sacrifice. Amen. amen. Somebody say amen. 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 God told me to tell real the life. Amen. What Proverbs says, 3 and 7. Be not wise in your own eyes. Amen. 
Instead, you need to trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. With all thine heart. Somebody help me preach. Amen. And lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall. Do I have a witness? Direct your path. Amen. You got to ask the Lord, order my steps in your word. Hallelujah. Lead me and guide me along this narrow way. Hallelujah. And your response ought to be, yes, Lord. I'll go where you want me to go. I'll say what you want me to say. I'll go if I have to go by myself. I'll go even when the odds are stacked against me. Lord, show me. Where to go. Amen. I gotta leave you now. Amen. But 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 you might say, Pastor, why are you telling us to walk in obedience? Why, out of all the things you could have preached on Super Bowl Sunday, why would you tell us to walk in obedience? Valentine's is Wednesday. Shouldn't you been talking about love today? Uh -huh. Well, Sister Charlotte, I got a reason why I want to tell you to walk in obedience. I'm telling you to walk in obedience because the blessing of the Lord is not attached to how often you come to church. Oh, the blessing of God is not attached to how fancy your clothes are. Ah, oh, but the blessing of God is attached to your obedience. Our text in Deuteronomy says that we shall walk in all the ways of the Lord. Amen. As God have commanded you, that you may live and that it might be well. That it might be well with you. In other words, God told me to tell you, amen, that the blessing of the Lord is attached to your obedience. And that your life may not be well right now, but if you just walk in obedience, after a while, by and by, God will, he'll make it well with you. And not only that, the Bible says that he'll prolong your days on the land which the Lord give you to possess. In other words, God, he'll bless you with long life as long as you obey the word of the Lord. The Bible says if you be willing and obey ye shall eat the good the good of the land I want to tell somebody that the blessing of the Lord will come on your life when you're obedient nothing the devil will do can destroy your blessing cause you're walking in obedience what you say Lord he said if you're hearken unto the voice of the Lord to observe and to do all his commandments he'll set you high above all nations of the earth and the blessing of the Lord shall come on thee the blessing of the Lord will overtake thee just look at your neighbor and say neighbor I'm going to live in the overflow why are you going to live in the overflow because God is going to honor my obedience. He's going to honor all the things that he told me to do. If you obey the voice of the Lord, if you hearken to the call of God, if you adhere to what God says, the Bible said you'll be blessed in the city. You'll be blessed in the field. You'll be blessed all around you. The Bible said, hearken unto the voice of the Lord and the fruit of your body will be blessed. What does that mean? Your children and your children's children, they will, they will be blessed. Somebody throw your head back, throw your hands in the air and say, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. 
I'm blessed, I'm blessed because I'm being obedient. The Bible said, and blessed shall be the fruits of your ground. Everything that you touch will be blessed. Everywhere that you walk will be blessed because you follow after the call of Almighty God. I got to leave y'all now, but I want you to understand that the Bible said, blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. What does that mean? When you obey God, your wallet is blessed. When you obey God, your pocketbook is blessed. When you obey God, your finances are blessed. The Bible said, he'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out. Pour you out a blessing. There won't be room enough to receive. He'll press it down and he'll shake it together. He'll roll it over in your life. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, my blessing, my blessing, my blessing is on the way. Hallelujah. But I like this part. The Bible said that if you obey, he'll allow your enemies They'll come in one way, but the Bible said they will flee in seven different ways. If you got an enemy, don't fight your enemy, just obey God. If you got an enemy, don't argue with them, just obey God. Stay the course, stay with God, walk with God, talk with God, let God lead you, let God guide you, let God be your all in all. It will, I said it will, I said will, I said will, it will pay off. God will honor your obedience. God will turn it around. God will fix it for you. Be not dismayed. Whatever be tired, God will. I say God will. I say God will. Your body gonna get tired. Your mind will be confused. But keep on walking. Keep on trusting God. Stay obedient. Stay in the fight. Don't throw in the towel. Stay with God. It's gonna pay off. I said it'll pay off. I said it'll pay off. I'm a living witness that when you stay with God, it'll pay off. I'm a living witness when you submit to God, it'll pay off. You may not feel like it, but tell the Lord, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Use me, Lord. Feel me, Lord. Get the glory out of my life. Everybody not gonna get it. But if God be for us, 
If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. Friends, that's what God told me to tell you today. Amen. If you walk in obedience, yes. he'll cause the blessing of God yes. to overtake you. Amen. You'll be so blessed that even on your bad day, it's better than some people's good day. Amen. Amen. Because God says, I'll bless you that way. Amen. You just need to tell God, yes. Amen. You just need to yes. submit Amen. to Amen. the will of the Lord. Amen. And let God lead you the rest of the way. Amen. Do I have a witness? Amen. Amen. Come on, clap your hands if you can. Amen.
number is 910-335-663. In the name of the Lord, 8663.